can you hear me? I see you stirring. It's time to get up. There you go. Just follow the sound of my voice. Pat, 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 pat. There you go. Open your eyes. Perfect. Can you see me? Oh, shh. It's okay to stay still. I'm not going to hurt you. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. I'm glad to see you opening your eyes. Okay. No, you don't know me. At least not yet. You seem to be going in and out. How does your head feel? I bet you look like you hit it pretty hard. Do you mind if I take a closer look? Yeah, that's quite a doozy you got there. Hmm. Do you remember anything? No? How far back can you remember? Oof. That's not good. I'm sure it will come back to you soon. Until then, you can stick with me. I don't want anything to happen to you. Do you remember your name? No. I see. Well, my name is Shani. Yep, it's short for Shannon, but I never really liked that name. Yeah, I found you when I was on my way back here. We're just in some vacant house. I was setting up here for the night, and... I went out to try to find some rations, and I saw you knocked unconscious over by, like, what appears to be, like, the local drugstore in this area. Yeah. You don't remember how you got there? Hmm. Well, don't worry, I checked you out. At least from what I could see briefly. You didn't appear to have any, like, bite marks or anything like that. That's why I brought you back here. Though... You did have quite a bit of wounds all over you. It looks like you might have been in an altercation, or at least had a pretty nasty fall. Yeah, the one on your head looks pretty bad. 
I was going to take care of that while you were out, but now that you're awake, you're going to have to try to get through it with me. We're going to need to patch it up. You also have some pretty bad cuts and stuff along your arms. So, not to worry. I have some stuff that we can use to patch you up. You're lucky I found you. Though, in this world, can we really say any of us are lucky? You don't remember? Oh my, my, my. You must have hit your head pretty hard. I don't want this to come as a shock to you. But maybe it'll help jog your memory. A while ago, years ago, an outbreak started. What seemed as like a normal viral infection started to spread rapidly. It was affecting everybody. I mean, it just seemed like a flu. However, the strain started to mutate and it got worse. It started to raise people's temperature very high, basically like boiling them from the inside. People would pass away and we thought that was the end of it. Only days later for them to reawake, but only it wasn't them. I mean, yes, their body was reawaking, but their mind wasn't. And it just spread and I lost my family to it. I've been alone here ever since. No, they didn't, they can't find a cure. At least not yet. Though, that's where I've been headed down to Florida. I hear that in Florida that the only survivors like us, people who are immune to the virus, they've all gathered in Florida and they're working on finding a cure. So that's my end goal to get down there. But what about you? I haven't found any other survivors in years, you're the first person I've come across. So, were you alone too, or do you have a group? Can't remember. Oh, it's okay. Don't let it bother you, okay? Your memory will come back, and till then I'll take care of you. Okay? Alright. Well, we can keep talking, but why don't we get started on patching you up? I have my bag here. And it holds all my essential stuff. I tend to travel. I keep what's necessary, but I don't want too much weighing me down. I typically will stop at different cities and stuff and rummage through and see what they have to restock. But I do like to keep a little first aid kit in case anything happens to me or now anybody else. So, 
can have some motor in here. And I know your head's hurting, so... I'm just gonna give you a couple. Here you go. And... I always keep some water. Here you go. Go ahead and take that Motrin, it'll help with your headache, okay? Alright. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna start treating your wounds. Well, like I said, I only brought you back to my camp for the night because I didn't see any bite marks on you and I've been watching you for a couple hours now because you've been out and I haven't seen any sign of you getting the virus or anything like that so I think it's pretty safe to say you're okay and I want to make sure you stay that way like I said you're the first like survivor I've met in years, so it's nice to have a companion at least for a little bit. First things first though, I do want to check your temperature because let's say I did miss a bite on a place I didn't look. The first sign of the virus is going to be your temperature rising. Yeah, to like abnormal abnormal heights, like a high temperature that you would rush to the hospital would be like 102, 103. These people, when they would get the virus, would spike to like 106 or higher, so they started to like cook on the inside and they would be like that for days. Oh, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to keep you up to date on what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so, go ahead and open your mouth for me. And close. We're just gonna let that sit here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Okay. Ninety-eight point seven. You're okay. That's good news for us, huh? <laughs> okay. So I have a whole little kit here. My parents were in the medical field when they were around and that's why I know as much as I do about this. I would meet them up at the hospital for lunch and stuff like that and I would hear all about it from the doctors. It was really rough. Like I said, it's been years. But I'm not gonna let their memory I'm not gonna let their memory go. I'm gonna make it to Florida and we're gonna find a cure. And we'll start to rebuild. And now you can come with me. But first, let's get you all patched up so you're gonna be good to go in the morning. 
yeah, we can't stay here. To be honest, I already saw a lot of them out there when I was bringing you back. I can kind of hear them in the distance, which can be worrisome, but I think we're safe in here. At least till morning. Again, I'm not trying to scare you. Just, we have to stay alert, okay? Be on our toes. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some antiseptic on a cotton round and we're going to go ahead and clean up the wound on your head. You had a couple little ones along your neck and face and then you had another pretty big one along your arm and some smaller ones so we're just going to go ahead and start to wipe those off so that way it's disinfected and you won't get any infection, okay? Okay, this may sting a little bit, but try not to be too loud, okay? We don't want anything to hear us. Yeah, I mean, that's why I've been talking kind of quiet. You know, I figured you might think I'm just like whispering or being quiet because it's night, but we really don't want them to hear us and give away our location, okay? Okay, so I'm just going to spray this little cotton around here. Okay. And... Alright, are you ready? Okay. Oh. I'm sorry. It's not so bad once it's been on there for a second. We're just going to wipe that away there. Okay. And let's get these other little ones on your face. Just making sure everything's disinfected. I would hate to leave even the smallest cut and have you get an infection or catch the virus, so... Get your neck here. I know, I'm sorry. But you're 
doing really good. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna check one more time with my light. I used to have a lantern, but the battery died and it was too much upkeep. And now I just keep a bunch of candles. Much easier. Okay. Alright. Lastly, I'm just going to get your arm, okay? Well, arms. Can you roll up your sleeves? Perfect. Are you ready? Okay. You know I know I know. You're doing really good, I promise. There we go. Let's get a few little ones over here. Perfect. Okay. So, now that we disinfected everything, I'm going to need to up the cut on your head. No need to be alarmed. It really isn't too bad. It just looks worse because the head bleeds so much. But you just need a couple little sutures, a couple little stitches in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and bandage up your arm and you should be pretty good there for now. Okay. So, let me see, where'd my kit go? Okay, since I am going to get a little close to you and you can't be too safe in the world right now, I'm just going to put on my mask. And I have a needle right here. I have here is a surgical needle and we have some dissolvable thread. Like I said, my parents worked in the medical field and I grabbed all of this before I left. So, though this is kind of the last of what I have. But, no big deal. We can always stock up on more somewhere else. Now, Here's the thing. I don't have any anesthesia or anything like that. I know. But, I do have that rag if you want to bite down on it. And I'm going to go ahead and heat up the needle. And then we'll go ahead and get started, okay? Shh, it'll be okay. It's only a couple. You can handle it. Alright? Let me go ahead and grab that towel. 
hollow for you. Okay, here we go. Lay down on this. Alright. Now remember, you know this is going to hurt, but try and stay as quiet as you can, okay? We don't need anything to hear us. But I think you can handle it. So. going to sterilize the needle. Okay. Alright, here we go. On the count of three, okay? One, two, Okay, that's one. I know, I know, I know. Let me know when you're ready. Ready? Okay, two. Mm -hmm. Just bite down, hon. You got that. we go. Three. You're doing good. Four. Alright, last one, okay? Alright. Five. Okay, let's tie that up. Need to cut it now. Okay. Okay. I know. Let me take that from you. You did a very good job. At least it's all patched up now. Let's just take a closer look. Yeah. All patched up. You won't get any infections now. And, like I said, it's dissolvable thread, so you're all good to go. Now, let's just get that arm wrapped up, shall we? First, I did see what looked to be like a couple little pieces of glass in your arm. I'm not sure if you broke that window I saw in the store or what happened, but I would like to take a closer look at that if you don't mind. So. Don't laugh at me for this, but these were my father's. I keep them with me because it helps me see small, like, areas that I need to treat on my arms and stuff like that, or wherever. And since we're going to be looking at your arm for tiny pieces of glass, I figure they can help me. I'm just going to use my scalpel here, and my tweezers, and I'm just going to get out those couple pieces of glass that I think I saw in there, okay? Okay. Let me see your arm. Okay. Here we go. To make a small little incision right here. Okay. 
and I got one little piece of glass, we'll set that off to the side, and I think there's a bigger piece in here, yeah, there it is, okay, are you okay, can I continue? stuck in there. Hold on. I'm so sorry. We want to get it out, though. Got it. That was a bigger piece. Alright, but it looks like we got it all. So. You did a great job. I'm just gonna go ahead a little ointment on it. This will just help numb it so you don't have any pain and help the healing process a bit. Okay. Grab another little cotton round. See, this one doesn't hurt. Okay. Very good. Let's wrap that up, shall we? You know, but we want to make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. There we go. We're just going to tie that off and We'll change your bandages tomorrow, okay? And then we'll put everything back in the little med kit. <laughs> How you feeling? Yeah, I know. It doesn't feel that good when we don't have, like, anesthesia or anything to help. I'm sorry about that. I really am. But... At least you're good now for the long run. Thanks for staying.
Now you know what they sound like. Let me know if you hear anything else, okay? Or if you see anything. Okay. I think we're okay for now. Oh, shh. There's no need to worry. A gun? No, no, no. I don't have a gun. But that's no reason to worry. No, I don't have a gun for a few reasons. But I do have weapons, so I can take care of you and we'll get you your own as well. But you see, a gun may give you like distance, but when you run out of ammo, it doesn't do anything. And then you'd have to restock and not to mention the base drawback, as soon as you fire that gun, that's a loud noise. You're going to be drawing major attention to yourself, and a mob will be around you in no time. Not to mention any survivors that are looking out for themselves. You know, I stick with blades. You do have to be closer, but it's more silent, and you won't draw attention to yourself, so it's a clean getaway. With these things, you want to make sure you stick with the head. It's the quickest way, and they won't come back that way. So, quicken and release, and you still have your weapon, and you haven't drawn any attention to yourself or anything else to come after you. So... I used to have, like, swords and axes and stuff, but frankly, I'm pretty weak, so I tend to just stick with knives. This one's my favorite. It was my father's. Quick in, quick out, and you still have your weapon. Much prefer knives. So, no reason to worry. I'm not unarmed, and I can take care of you tonight. So, I just want you to get some rest, and I'll keep lookout for the night. And then you can get me back tomorrow. Once we get you a weapon of your own. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to, I do kind of have a ranged weapon you can play with tomorrow and see if you're any good at it. Like I said, I like blades, so I have some throwing knives here. They're really cool. It does take some practice, but you can play with them tomorrow. And they come in handy because, like I said, blades are silent, whereas guns aren't. So, I can throw those, and if they stick, well, that's a silent kill from afar, so they come in handy. The only unfortunate part about them is, in my second set, I've already lost one. See, there's only two. Yeah, that's actually when I found you. There was some around you, and typically I would retrieve my knives, but I wanted to get you out of there, so I killed one in our way, and I just left it. <laughs> no need to worry about it. I can find more. I'm just glad you're okay. I also have this one if you want to try. It's just a hammer, but... It's heavy and it can do some damage. Yeah, you're interested in the hammer? Cool, I'll let you play with that one tomorrow. So. Oh, you're thirsty? 
Oh, I gave you the water. Yeah, you feel free to drink it. Don't worry about me. I can get more later. Are you hungry by chance? I do have a little bit of rations around here. Yeah. Let's see, where did I put those? Here they are. Like I said, I travel pretty light and I typically find food day by day just so I'm not weighing myself down, but I found some graham crackers. So if you're hungry, please feel free to eat those graham crackers. Yeah, they are good, aren't they? What else do I have in my bag? Not much, like I said. I like to travel light, but... I have some extra candles. Like I said, I moved away from lanterns and... I stick to candles now. And they're slow burning, so that comes in handy too. One candle can last me like a couple nights. I also keep a journal and a pen. I like to keep my thoughts down in here and I kind of map out where I've been so I don't backtrack. Like I said, I haven't found anybody in years, so there's definitely going to be an entry about you in here. You know, maybe we should get you a journal. Maybe it'll help you remember what happened and if you had a group and stuff like that. Yeah, we can look for one tomorrow. Keep some eye drops. for when it gets cold. Your necessities like toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant. My father's watch. It helps me keep track of the time since I don't have my cell phone anymore. Pictures of my family. I don't look at it often because it makes me sad, but... You know, your memories fade, so it's good to have pictures of them. Anyway... And don't laugh at me for this one, but... It gets boring being by yourself, so... I have extra batteries that I found for my Game Boy Color. <laughs> and yes, I am playing Pokemon Blue. <laughs> but yeah. Pretty much what I keep in my bag. I mean, I also have some bolt cutters, but that's just in case I need to get through a fence or something. Pretty self explanatory.
have a radio. Well, I actually do have this right here, but unfortunately, it's not like one where I can communicate with anybody. So I haven't been able to tell anybody where I'm at. I've been looking for a while for one where I can communicate my location back if I hear anything. Right now I just use it to scan through different frequencies and see if I can hear anybody. I haven't had any luck yet, but I keep hoping. Hoping I'm going to hear something from Florida. So I always carry it with me and turn it on every now and then. The batteries for that though are hard to find, so I turn it on sparingly. But I think that's enough questions for now. <laughs> I think it's time for you to get some sleep. we heard earlier, it's gone now. I don't see anything out the window through the cracks and it's gotten pretty quiet. I think you're safe to go to bed and I showed you I can take care of you. So, I hope you trust me. And when you get up, we'll head out to our next location, okay? Okay.